Hi, hello, back with you all. How is everybody today? Oh, are we feeling good? Hi, Leslie, you're the first one to pop onto my Instagram. How are you? Hi, Dorinda. Hi, Linda. Hi, Sue. Excellent. This is working. Good. Let me patch in our friends on Facebook. Hopefully that will start. Hi, Facebook. How are you? Hope everybody is keeping well today. Uh, as usual, I've got my lovely Amy on Facebook, my digital editor here at Lizelle Wellbeing. So she will be tapping away to respond to you, to all your comments on Facebook. I know you're all chatting amongst yourselves there as well, which is really lovely. So I go back and have a look afterwards and see all the comments and add stuff where I can. So she'll be popping all the links to everything I talk about there that you can click through to easily. Instagram, sorry, doesn't work that way. But what I have done is I've just updated the link tree so for those of you who don't know, that's at the top um, of my Instagram, where it's got my profile with my picture and a little bit of blurb about me. If you go down to the blue line that says link tree, forward slash something, 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 uh, that is, if you click on that, opens up a magical world of links. It's brilliant. And you can just find links to everything, all my recipes and podcasts and all sorts of stuff. I'm actually going to take down, I've got a hanging rack above me here and I can just see this in the edge of my um, frame so I'm just going to take that down so yeah welcome back to my kitchen and I thought that I would share with you a couple of kind of homemade DIY cleaning hacks that I've been doing and I was reminded of this actually because this is in the current issue of the magazine thank you all very much by the way for letting me know where you're finding it quite a few copies of this still seem to be in Waitrose and Marks and Spencers so that's good if you're out and about then you could add that into your shopping basket if not, as I mentioned before, I do have a few, okay? Don't spread it too far and wide because I do have a few here at the farm and I'm really happy to pop them. You can go online and order them on lizellewellbeing.com. Really happy just to stick a stamp on an envelope and put it in the post and something I mentioned yesterday, which lots of you grabbed, but I do still have a few left. But again, I'm only telling you, okay? You're not gonna find this on the website. It's not gonna be on social media anyway, this is this is just between us, okay, because I haven't got that many. But I did find, when I was cleaning out one of my cupboards, as we're all doing at the moment, this beauty, and this, oh, made my heart sing to see it, because this was two years ago, it was the spring issue, and it's, it's called Spring Joy, I know it all comes out backwards, because that's, my phone is flipped round, um, but uh, it's just got, so much in here the recipes are just lovely it was so delicious so i've got a whole thing behind the label on chocolate i don't think i don't know maybe it's kind of hard because of the reflections um if i wanted to share a couple of things with you oh a pea burger that's nice uh so there's lots of how to make stuff but also if i can find it so lots of nice recipes Lots of beauty. This was a really great feature on eyes and eye care and eye bags. So, and there's um, a tired eye tonic that you can make, a little recipe there. And then the recipes generally are just lovely. Look at that, orange, thyme and ricotta cheesecake. How delicious does that look? And then we've also, that was my lovely friend Anthea. Hey, Anth, how are you doing? I must give you a call actually, it reminds me. Um, oh look, there she is, a picture with my yearbook too. Who's got that one? That's the yearbook too with Anthea. Um, and then this, this is really lovely. If you are into baking and want to do a bit, this is, look at that, triple layer lime passion fruit and coconut spelt cake or spelt ginger snap biscuits. I talked about Sharpen Park before, which is uh, the mill not far from me. There's an organic spelt farm and spelt is this ancient grain, which is easier on the digestion and is also really high in nutrients. It's amazing. And it's run by Roger and Monty Saul. Roger Saul, some of you may know from years ago, he was the founder of Mulberry. Um, and after he left the fashion brand, he and Monty bought this amazing organic spelt farm and they have Sharpen Park. And if you go online, you can buy their flowers and all sorts of things. And they make pasta out of spelt and it's really good. This is something that I'm going to be doing, the dark chocolate and almond cake. I thought that looked rather lovely. Uh, and it doesn't need any flour either, so that's a good one. And then look, all these sort of lighter lunches and breads and 
just so much. So anyway, I'm not going to bang on about that now because enough to say that I have got a couple of boxes of these and uh, I'm just going to, if you get the, if you want to buy this one as a single issue, then I would just pop this one in free. I'll just shove it in the envelope. Okay. So, but that's, that's just for us. Um, and you know, it's, and it's literally while limited stock. So while they're there, while I've got them here, um, under my desk in a box, I thought I may as well share them. So what I'm going to do today is just bring to life, really, a couple of the things that we've got in this current issue. If you've got it already, then you might know this. If not, you've also find it on the website. So it's on lizardwellbeing.com. Don't rush off and look now. You've got plenty of time to look later. But one of the things that I think we're all much more aware of, isn't it, is about keeping things really clean. And certainly for me, having everybody under my roof at the moment, I'm noticing that things are really getting grubby and I'm extra cautious, obviously, on cleanliness, but I don't want to pack my house full of chemical cleaning solutions. And I want to keep things as natural and as sweet smelling as I can. So this is really nice. This is the lavender, lemon and peppermint multi-purpose spray. And you make it and you use white vinegar as a base. And I'm sure all of you home hackers out there will know all about white vinegar. In fact, thinking about Anthea, I know she's always going on about white vinegar. So you can either buy, you can get a, a white vinegar spray cleaner. This is the, one of the ones that I use here. So in fact, it's uh, running down a bit because I've been using it quite a lot. And you can use it for glass and mirrors and surfaces and kitchens and all sorts of stuff. And that's just got a quite a nice spray. But to be honest, it smells a bit vinegary. It doesn't smell so great. So what I like to do is I make my own, of course. So that's super easy. You just need to get uh, white vinegar. You add some extra water, a little bit of glycerine just to kind of hold the essential oils. And then I use, I love Neil's Yard. I've used them as a brand for years and years and years. They're actually based not far from me in the West Country. And I've been to their factory and I've been to their medicinal garden. Some of you may have seen some of the Instagram posts I did a while ago with Neil's Yard. Oh, that's so nice. Really, really smells good. So here in a container, so I will use a little spray bottle like this. So I've just written on it my, my little spray bottle. So that's got all my ingredients in it. And I've used 10 drops of lavender, 10 drops of peppermint, and 10 drops of lemon. So you really get that lovely, fresh, I love lavender anyway, because it's just sort of calming. Seems to take the edge off anxiety, doesn't it? We love a bit of lavender. I've used lemon because it's it's fresh, it's citrus, and it smells really clean. It's also naturally antibacterial. And then peppermint, again, you've got the antibacterial qualities of the essential oils, and it's very fresh and just invigorating, and everything smells clean, doesn't it, if you've, if you've got that mixture. And I find that combination, 10 drops of lavender, 10 drops of peppermint, and 10 drops of um, lemon work really well as a combination together and then you just need a spray bottle or you can recycle an empty spray bottle that you've used from a, a commercial cleaning product. Um, so who else is using uh, vinegar? Any other home hacks? Do please let me know, I'd love to know. So this is in this DIY spring cleaning, so or on the website, so you can find it there as well. And also there's uh, some a couple of other really fun things here that you might like to do as well. This is a carpet deodorizing powder. So, you know, I won't do the advert, but you know the one where they dance around and do the shake and what's it? And anyway, that one, but you don't need to go and buy a product. And you know, they're all packaged in plastic and all of that. So this is something that you just need bicarbonate of soda and lavender essential oil. That's literally all it is. And then you have a shaker jar. I think I might have, yeah. So it would be something like this. Sorry, showing the back of my head. Any of you that have seen my home hair tutorial which is on youtube will know that i don't do the back of my head <laughs> that gave it away then didn't it <laughs> so i just i just tong the front bits because that's all the bits that you can see so you know if you're doing your zoom calls or your conference calls or whatever just do the front bits life's too short honestly to faff about looking at the back of your head except of course if you're doing something like this and you turn around so i'm gonna have to walk around like this now and i said you don't see the back of me anyway this is i mean i've obviously been using this for flour but that's the kind of thing you could have a shaker a talcum powder shaker or you could actually put it in a sieve and just sieve it over the carpet but that works really well as a carpet deodorizer i think with all of us being locked in and locked down for longer we need these kind of lovely fresh things so if you get a moment, do go and 
um, have a look at my essential oil features. I've got essential oil features on Lizelle Wellbeing at the moment, and I've asked my lovely digital team to kind of bring them forward because what happens with a website is we've got so much content is things tend to get a bit buried and a bit lost and it's a bit hard to navigate sometimes. So those uh, cleaning features, I've asked them to put on the front page so that you'll see. And if you read through, you get lots of instructions and info and you can click on links to find out more about stuff. So I hope that's really helpful. Um, anyway, thank you, Amy. Big thank you. I can see uh, this is a message from Karen on Facebook. White vinegar diluted with water is great on windows and glass. Absolutely, totally agree with you there. It's just such an easy home cleaner. And as I say, you know, you can you, once you've got your spray bottle, or even actually, if you you know, if you buy one like this, you can then top it up. You can make your own with it. So, you know, cutting down again on all this plastic is just so helpful, isn't it? Not to mention it's a lot nicer because you're getting these lovely smells, natural smells in the home rather than synthetic perfumes. And you are also um, doing something for the environment and it's a lot cheaper. So something else that I was doing today that you might have seen, and I know a lot of you have been joining in with, is my skipping. So who else is skipping? Yeah, are you skipping with me? Send me some hearts or some thumbs up if you're skipping. So you don't need to have a skipping rope. And this is something that I mentioned earlier on, actually. Obviously, if you do have a rope, it's good because it's a physical thing that you have to jump over. And actually, I was with Michael Gary doing my training uh, this morning, just, just for me, one-on-one. -on -one, and he was saying, come on, Liz, when are we going to do a skipping video? And I was thinking, oh, no, because it is, it is quite hard. And I don't know if any of you are um, skipping, but it's you know, the, 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 I mean, I do fall over occasionally. I do kind of, you know, trip up and, um, you know, not fall down, but certainly trip up and stop and have to restart. So especially if you're doing those hop to hop one leg to the other, but if you don't have a rope, well, A, you can order one online. They're really cheap and easy, but you can, as I said before, you can just skip. Okay. You got your rope. And then you can do foot to foot, you can do tricks where you swing it around and do all of that, can't you? Because it's nothing to trip over. Anyway, uh, I hope that has inspired you a little bit. There's a feature all about skipping and all about running and, and fitness on Lizelle Wellbeing. Uh, I can just see Amy's just posted that on Facebook. Thank you. Find out about the health benefits of skipping. So uh, you'll find that in Linktree as well, or my lovely Insta fam. And there were some questions that came through actually about, you know, skipping on concrete, skipping outside, protecting the feet and the knees and the joints. Obviously really important to do that. And these, I've been asked lots of times what I'm wearing. So these are my trainers. And no, they're not smelly old trainers because actually I do spray them with my peppermint, lemon and lavender spray. So I spray them. Um, and there was a question about bed linen. You can also spritz that onto bed linen as well. I wouldn't use the vinegar, but you can make spritzes with essential oils and, and water, just like a linen spray. French do that, don't they? You know, in fact, you can even buy fancy lavender ones, which is just essential oil and, and water, and you just give it a good shake and then spritz it on if, as you're ironing, which is lovely. Um, so anyway, back to trainers. So I invested um, several months ago in these and I've, again I put a link in the feature on skipping and also the feature about running because I use them for skipping and for running and Michael introduced me to them they're Adidas Ultra Boost um, there are lots and lots of different types trainers are a whole minefield trust me but these particular ones I like um, I think they're called uncaged because they've got kind of springiness here so you get really good support I don't know if you can see but they're sort of elasticated up here um, and the cushioning is really good. They really give me bounce. And I do feel that my joints are protected, that my feet are protected. I feel really secure in them. I feel, you know, when Michael makes me do speed work, when we're running, which is when he'll make me sprint for, I don't know, 100 yards and then jog and then sprint again. And, you know, especially outside, you've got to be quite careful of your footing because the terrain can be, well, certainly down here in the country, it's a bit rough but even if I'm in the park you never know there are twigs and potholes and all sorts of stuff so and I'm always nervous about literally falling flat on my face so I like to feel that I'm wearing um, a good comfortable supportive shoe so anyway I just throw that out there I thought I'd actually show you um, rather than uh, reply on comments and you'll often see me in videos and 
on my Instagram static pictures, you'll see me wearing, and that's what I'm wearing. So let me just crack on with a few questions. Um, okay, so well, this is, this is a really good one, actually, because it's come in. What essentials do you recommend for use around the home? Well, lavender is absolutely my must-have. Uh, I use it. I've got a little bottle beside the bed. The last thing I do at night is I just put a few drops on my pillow. I used to use those sleep sprays, and you can make sleep sprays, actually, really easily. We've got a little how-to on the Lizard Wellbeing website if you want to take a look. But again, they're expensive, they're packed in plastic. Uh, and to be really honest with you, I find that a couple of drops of lavender oil on my pillow work just as well. And I've never had an issue with it. I've never had an issue with staining. Obviously they do say be careful for that. But for me personally, it's never been a problem. Obviously you could do a patch test if you've got particularly precious pillowcases, you might want to be a bit careful. But I just find that there's something really therapeutically calming about lavender. And they've done studies that show that it is technically sedating. You know, it, it's very calming. If you, if you have uh, people linked up to brainwave machines and all of that, and you study in giving them environments with different essential oils, different essential oils will have different clinical effects. So lavender absolutely encourages uh, your serotonin levels, it just keeps everything calm and relaxed. It's probably not the oil that you'd want to use if you were, say, just going for your driving test, <laughs> you know, or something where you need to be really sharp and on it. Um, you'd need something like rosemary for that because the essential oils in rosemary have been shown to be uh, very alert making. So it makes you more responsive. Your cognitive function is quicker. Your, your reasoning can be, can be uh, quicker, can be improved. And they can do that by testing. They give you, I don't know, bricks on cubes or whatever those kind of puzzles that they do. And then they, they have control groups with no oil or with different oils and then with other oils like rosemary. And that has been shown to sharpen your focus. Um, peppermint does the same thing. Peppermint's very much a mind sharpener. So you can have a little bit of peppermint that you can sniff if you need to kind of really wake yourself up and, and feel fresh. You know, when we brush our teeth in the morning, we get that kind of fresh hit of peppermint. And partly that's to do with the, uh, the smell of the essential oil. And smells are one of the quickest ways of shifting our mood. And that's because we actually have brain cells at the top of our nose here. It's one of the few places where we have neurotransmitters outside the brain. The other area, of course, is the gut. Uh, but just here, and they, are, they connect into the limbic system, which is the frontal bit of the, the brain here, which controls mood and emotion. And that's why smell is so important. And it is instantly linked to memory as well. So, you know, if you catch a whiff of something and it just immediately reminds you of a situation or a person or a time, it could be good, it could be bad. Um, for me, cut grass, always. Cut grass. If I'm, you know, if I'm walking past a field or or in the park and they're cutting the grass or something, I'm instantly taken back to uh, being a 16-year-old with my O-level revision books. Yes, because we did do O-levels back in the day. Who else remembers O-levels? And uh, for those of you who are far too young to remember that, they are what we had before GCSEs. Okay, so I was doing my O-level revision lying in the playing fields at school, back in the day when schools had playing fields before they'd all been sold off. Um, and they were mowing the grass all the time. And that for me, still now, you know, aged 56. <laughs> so what's that, 40 years on, <laughs> I still get a whiff of cut grass and I'm right there. <laughs> Slightly anxiety inducing. So for me, cut grass is not, um, is not the calmest of smells. <laughs> <laughs> but there are other things that I love and, and I have associated lavender with a good night's sleep. So that definitely, I always have that with me all the time and it's, it is very calming. It's also very good. I also keep lavender in the kitchen. I, I won't show you because I'm going to have to then move off and you'll see the back of my head that I haven't done my hair. So I'm not going to do that. Although I could go crab wise, couldn't I like that? But I'm just, just, I'll tell you, it is in my cupboard just here. It's a little bottle of lavender oil. Again, it's the Neil's Yard one. Um, and I use that neat on burns. So it's one of the few essential oils that they do recommend that you can use neat on your skin. So if you get a little burn from a hot pan, then that's something, or a little scald, that's, I would always use lavender. And they say that um, it's one of the reasons that that, that was discovered is that uh, a French pharmacist 
called Gap Fosse, who is kind of one of the fathers of modern day aromatherapy. He was in his lab and he burnt his hand and he plunged it into the nearest liquid that was available, which happened to be neat lavender oil. And he was amazed at how quickly his burn healed. And that is the story. So that's apparently how we know that lavender is good for burns. And that may be apocryphal or not, but it certainly works. So uh, it's certainly my go-to and I always have it in my, in my first aid box. A couple of other questions that have come in here. Thank you very, thank you, Amy, for feeding them to me uh, on my little um, iPad. She messages them through to me here. Can I incorporate essential oils into my beauty regime? Yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, I was just looking online before I started to, um, no, I wasn't, I tell a lie, I wasn't looking online. I was looking in my yearbook. So this is my yearbook one which I was also busy packing up and sending out, lots of you ordering that from um, down here on the farm, because of course I can just sign them and send them out, which is lovely. So yeah, so I was looking up, so I was really, I was going on about my nuts the other day when I was in my kitchen. And in that whole section, it also talks about uh, some natural beauty things that you might like to make. So for example, on the couple of pages before that, that's making a hand scrub using oil and sugar and essential oils, which is just a lovely thing to do. And the other thing that I thought I might have a go later on, there's a couple of things here. I showed you my apple snack, where I do slices of apple and I cover it with peanut butter or almond butter. Well, these are other things that you can do with an apple. So you can make a hydrating hair mask and you can make an apple exfoliating mask. And again, you could put essential oils in that. Lots of info on Lizard Wellbeing. Again, if you want to make homemade face packs and all that kind of stuff, and adding a few drops of essential oils is a really lovely thing to do. Um, just while I'm reminded actually about nuts, I'm gonna show you something. So I'm going to back up to the arger. Do this, so I don't have to turn around. Uh, these are my activated nuts, okay? So uh, I talked about how to soak your nuts. I'm not going to go there again because it made everybody laugh. Uh, but I soaked these. These are almonds, one of my favourites. Lots of vitamin E, lots of protein, really good for you. I soaked these for about 12 hours and then I've had them on a very, very low heat at the bottom of the oven, again, for another 12 hours. And what happens is they end up all lovely and crunchy and crispy, doesn't really change anything because you don't want to roast them. And when you roast them, you change the structure of the fats and that's no good. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to ever heat a lot of oil for a long time. And obviously nuts are full of natural oils. That's one of the reasons they're so good for us. So you just very, very slowly dehydrate them, bake them really. And what you're doing with the soaking is you are activating the enzymes within the nuts and the seeds, because you can do it with seeds as well, that can cause digestive issues. So it makes them much more uh, digestible. And a lot of people swear by them. You've probably seen them, you know, quite expensive in health food shops in little bags where you, you know, it says activated nuts and it's like it's some magical thing. It's not magical at all. They've just been soaked and, um, and dehydrated. And in fact, there's a really good feature on Lizard Wellbeing website. If you're interested, if you want to activate your nuts, this is where you can go and have a look. Uh, and it talks about how to dehydrate them and you can buy dehydrators. I think I put a link to one that I quite like, which was really inexpensive. A lot of dehydrators, you know, they can charge you hundreds of pounds for dehydrators, but there's one that I've linked to, which I think is about 30 quid and it's a really good one. I've used it before in my studios in London. Uh, and I also have a link to an organic almond supplier because if you buy small bags, it's like anything, isn't it? If you buy in bulk, it's much, much cheaper. So these little bags of almonds can just be so expensive. Whereas um, I have got a link to a kilo bag of organic almonds. And the other good thing I like about that particular supplier that I've linked to is they're Spanish. So uh, they're not from California. And there is a huge, big controversy. If you start looking up, you know, online, the environmental impact of Californian almonds, it's, it's really high in terms of water and what it does to the bee population and all of that stuff. And also it's just so much further away from us, isn't it? I know there's probably some Californians watching, so apologies. I don't want to diss your um, agriculture. But for us here in Europe, actually it makes sense to buy a little bit more locally, perhaps a little bit more sustainably. So um, anyway, so I popped a link on there. 
Did you know that it takes one litre of water pr to produce one almond? So they are, they are big water guzzlers. So, you know, we need to be aware of that when we talk about the environmental impact of things like these plant milks or, you know, milk substitutes. We need to be aware that there are lots and lots of, fa lots of factors at play. Anyway, I'm not going to go there because that involves me getting on my soapbox. And I normally save that kind of thing for a Friday. Yeah, for my Friday fives. Who else listens to my Friday fives? I've got a good one coming up this Friday. I've already got it all in my head, actually, what I'm going to say. So anyway, just to finish up on the yearbook, that is Basil, Botanical Baz, making her presence felt uh, or heard. Anyway, um, the other few things that have uh, you've all been loving from my yearbook is, um, of course, in yearbook one, you've got the pea fritter recipe. Thank you for posting all your pictures of that. Um, this is something that I'm going to be doing later as a little bit of a treat. Dark chocolate dipped strawberries. How delicious. Spotted lots of strawberries coming into our local village shop recently. Um, and of course, the Beauty Boost bars. And I've still got a few of mine actually over here. Not many. This is my box from earlier. Look, that's it. <laughs> that's all that's left. They go down really well, actually, with the with the rest of the family. A uh, couple more things to tell you before I forget. Oh, I just wanted to say a shout out to Janet. Janet, if you are watching, I'm sending you lots of love. Janet, you are just back home having had a hysterectomy and you are resting up. Um, I think you said it was day six after the op. So sending you lots of love from here for me down in the West Country. And that does remind me actually to say that tomorrow I'm going to be sharing my screen with Dr. Louise Newson. Yeah, the wonderful menopause doctor. If you are affected by any cancer issues and you're interested in perimenopause care, menopause, HRT and cancer, especially breast cancer, then do please listen. She's got it on her website now. She had it as an Instagram Live on Sunday, which I tuned into for most of that. And it was completely fascinating. Um, and tomorrow, she and I are going to be chatting particularly about menopause and pain and misdiagnosis of things like fibromyalgia and migraine, the link with menopause and migraine and hormones generally. Um, so if you've got any questions or comments, you can either leave them for me on Facebook and we'll pick them up and I will ask them uh, on your behalf to Louise or again on Instagram. Um, I'm going to be doing a little post on Instagram after this and you'll know that it's today's post because I'll do it. I'll be wearing this this colour so you can see. So just pop anything that you'd like me to ask Louise um, down on there. and I think that's going to be a really good one. Uh, lovely comments. Uh, you have Oggy 2018. I ordered your magazine for the first time. Hope I get your other edition too. Yes. Anybody who ordered it, um, I did actually sneak a couple of copies. If you've ordered this one from me directly, the single issue, then um, I did pop in the extra little freebie. So actually the freebie is slightly bigger, it's slightly, slightly thicker. I think that's because we used to do a quarterly magazine. Now we do a bi-monthly magazine. But um, anyway, I was just really, really pleased to find that. So don't miss it, but I'm only telling you guys, okay? You're not gonna see it on the website. It's not gonna mention it. All it will say when you go to the website is do you want to order this single issue? Single issue, which is just 6 99 in your postage, which is just the cost of a stamp. Um, and then I will actually put this extra one in with it, okay? But don't worry that it won't say that. And the reason it won't say that is because I didn't actually tell my team I was going to do it. <laughs> so I only decided to do it like, at, I don't know, 12, 25 yesterday, because I'd found a couple of boxes of them and I thought these are so beautiful and the content is, is so good and it's so relevant. Um, and I thought you guys would, would like it. So I just sort of talked about it. And then afterwards, my team were going, you said what? Well, we haven't got that on the website. And I said, no, it doesn't matter that it's not on the website because they'll understand. They've heard me say it and you trust me that I will put it in with your order. So, because it's actually, it's me packing the order because there is nobody else. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so do grab that if you can, but don't worry if you don't see it on the website because it's just between us. Okay, a couple of questions here. Talking about HRT, uh, are HRT patches okay with 
Propranadol, which I take for anxiety. Okay, well, that's from Sue. Well, I am not a doctor, so I can't give you medical advice. And even doctors actually aren't allowed to give advice over, over the internet. Um, all I would say is that HRT is, especially the body identical estrogen that you're getting from your patches or your, uh, your gels, and you're on patches here, so you'll have body identical estrogen. It's just a natural hormone that's in your body. So it's already there in your body. So it's not going to interfere with anything else because why would it? You've already got estrogen. You're just replacing what you lost naturally. So when you think about it logically, there's no reason um, why I don't know of any medication um, other than an estrogen blocker, because why would you have an estrogen blocker and take estrogen? That's the only uh, one that I would know of that would um, that would impact on estrogen. But anyway, I am not the expert on all that, although I have written a few books. I don't consider myself to be uh, the one who knows all. Uh, the one who knows all will be here with us tomorrow, Dr. Louise. So do tune in and I will make sure that that question is repeated and we can just really help to reassure and spread the word. And also, I know she will say this, you know, if you are somebody with migraine and headaches, yes, you can still have HRT. I know a lot of GPs don't know that, but you just need to have the version that goes through the skin, which is the patch or the gel or the new spray. I gather there's a new spray that you spray on the skin. That sounds exciting, doesn't it? Anyway, we're going to talk all about that tomorrow. Um, lastly, can you recommend a night, a face night massage oil? Well, I would suggest making your own. You know, I love rosehip. I've always loved rosehip oil. Um, rosehip oil, interestingly, has got plant sterols in it, which are very similar to uh, retinoic acid. So your Retin-A, um, your retinol products. So I would use, if I wanted to use a natural based face oil, I would use something that had lots of rosehip in it. Um, and I would also add in something really calming, a little drop of lavender again, why not? One of the flower oils, flower oils are always lovely to have on the face, so jasmine, ylang ylang, um, chamomile, again, at night time, these lovely sort of calming rose would be really nice. So yeah, flowers on the face is always my sort of little rule of thumb when it comes to essential oils. And with that, I am going to love you and leave you. Please keep the comments and the questions coming. I look forward to being back with you tomorrow. I shall probably be sitting in a nice quiet space in my sitting room tomorrow, ready for a cosy chat. Um, with Dr. Louise. Rory, uh, McCrory, Debbie, say hi to Debbie and B watching from my kitchen. Hi, Debbie and B from your kitchen, or my kitchen rather, to your kitchen. <laughs> Have a great, great day and um, look forward to being with you tomorrow. Sending you lots of love, calm, happy vibes. Stay safe, stay well. Bye bye. <laughs>